In this episode, I'll be taking a look at the Rose Apple Pi. The Rose Apple Pi is a single board computer, very similar to the Raspberry Pi 2 in many ways, but there are some differences and we'll explore those differences as we go. I'll also be comparing the Rose Apple Pi and the Raspberry Pi 2 head to head. I'll be looking at the Debian releases of both uh, units, both devices, and putting those head to head and see which one comes out on top. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look around the Rose Apple Pi itself and have a look where it actually differs from the Raspberry Pi 2. So by taking a look at the two boards, Rose Apple Pi on the bottom, Raspberry Pi 2 on the top, you can already see that there are some physical differences. The Rose Apple Pi, at its longest, measures about 96 millimeters by 60 millimeters, with a maximum depth of around about 19.5 millimeters. This is a little larger than the Raspberry Pi 2's maximum length at 87 millimeters by 57 millimeters by 17 millimeters at its deepest point. So if we take a walk around the two boards, uh, most of the orientation is fairly similar. The GPI pins, GPIO pins on both boards are at this end. On the Raspberry Pi 2, you've got the two banks of USB 2 ports and the Ethernet port on the end. On the Rose Apple Pi, Ethernet ports on this end, two USB 2 ports and a USB 3.0 port here. That is a difference. And of course, one less Raspberry, uh, one less USB port in total. On the back edge of the board down here on the Raspberry Pi, you have the composite 3.5 millimeter jack, the MPI camera connector, the HDMI out, and you have a USB micro on the end. With the Rose Apple Pi, very similar again, uh, connector here, SD card slot, the micro SD card, card slot is situated underneath the board and around the composite 3.5 mil connector here. HDMI out and nothing else down the edge of the board. On the Raspberry Pi, the SD card slot is on the end. So the specifications on the Rose Apple Pi are a little bit different to the Raspberry Pi 2. So you are talking about a quad core ARM A9 on the, on the Rose Apple Pi, two gig of RAM. Uh, the Power VR is the GPU. Um, internal storage of four gigabytes. This board does actually accept eMMC 4.5 storage up to 64 gigabytes, significantly faster than any SD storage. Uh, the internal storage, the flash on the board is four megabytes. Uh, obviously it takes the uh, micro SD cards, as you've seen, up to 64 gig. It has a 1.4 HDMI port, uh, 3.5 mil audio output uh, composite connector, so audio out and composite video a single USB 3 port, two USB 2 ports, um, 10 100 uh, Ethernet, and a couple of external buttons which differs to the Raspberry Pi, so an on-off button, sleep, wake, reset. Also has an external uh, header for um, uh, different uh, UART and SPI connections. Uh, the MIPI connector, as you've seen, the DSi camera, uh, sorry, the DSi screen connector, it uh, does require a 5 volt 2 amp micro USB power supply and at the moment there are a few distributions Android 5, Dubai and Ubuntu and Fedora. The differences between that and the Raspberry Pi are mostly around the CPU. So the Raspberry Pi 2 runs a 900 megahertz quad core CPU, an A7, and it runs one gigabyte of RAM instead of two on the Rose Apple Pi. The only other notable difference is that there is four USB 2 ports on the Raspberry Pi and one USB 3 port and two USB 2 ports on the Rose Apple Pi. So the next big question is putting the two side by side in a completely equal comparison, which one runs better? And in this instance, we're just looking at the desktop OS performance um, and we'll get into some more testing a little later. So I have uh, the Raspbian OS, this is a fresh install as of the middle of November 2015 and I'm just flicking around the screen at the moment. So because it's a fresh install and I want the most equal comparison possible, I'm actually going to uh, jump into the menus just in here 
and one of those options is an overclock option and I'll be overclocking um, the 900 megahertz to a 1000 megahertz. I'll then do the reboot and um, run the OS from there. So as you can see, it reboots quite quickly. Uh, no, uh, no real slow points with the Raspberry Pi 2 boot. And you're into the uh, GUI fairly quickly as well, up and running and ready to go. Uh, what you will notice as you move around the menus, the menus are actually quite quick. Uh, I only ever noticed one slowdown point and that was when it opened up the sub-menu for the LibreOffice. Apart from that, everything is basically instantaneous. It's a very enjoyable and fluid experience. So if we try a web page at the moment, and the obvious web page to choose is YouTube, something nice and heavy. It will be a little bit slow because of the poor internet connection, but it'll give us an idea of what the Raspberry Pi 2 with the default Raspbian operating system is capable of doing. And obviously if it can handle a YouTube page, there aren't many other pages that are gonna cause a problem. Okay, so just do a quick search on uh, YouTube here for some content. I'll just play one of mine. I have been continuing my okay, so there you go. And uh, you will notice also that the audio comes through straight away. So the Raspbian OS is quite polished. And in a small window, that's quite viewable. However, when you maximize, um, you obviously start to hit the CPU limitations okay, so you and you're only getting around about five frames a second there that is not an enjoyable experience but in the normal frame size window that is not too bad and like I said audio in okay so now we're firing up the Rose Apple Pie and this is the default Debian 8.1 distribution um, there are a couple of pre-programmed slow points. There's a 10 second wait uh, in, during the boot sequence. So that's why it's a little bit slower. But uh, for practicality purposes, it's not really any different to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, nothing that would cause you, you know, grief in waiting for it to actually boot up. All right, so we'll just log on with the standard logon. And there we go, we've booted up. Uh, it takes a fraction longer than the Raspberry Pi. This is the very first boot of the operating system, so it had to do a bit, of a, a bit of maintenance and preparation in the background. But as you can see, the menus are very zippy and quick. There are no delays. Uh, the CPU utilization is quite low. Uh, I am a bit of a fan of the LXDE um, environment. But uh, whipping through menus and firing up browsers and so on, You'll notice you get the Ice Weasel um, browser, much more Firefox than the browser that comes with the Raspberry Pi distro. And again, all the uh, clicks and submenus and so on, very quick. And once that's cached up, it'll open up a lot faster. There we go. So again, we'll do the YouTube test. and run the same video as last time. So as you can see in the small window, it's probably not perfectly fluid, but that is watchable. Um, and there is no audio playing. Uh, that is not because it's not possible, it's just that it's not uh, set up to play the audio over HDMI as part of the default distribution that's available at the moment. So if we run that full screen, So as you can see there, again, probably three to five frames a second. That is not an enjoyable experience. Um, so out of the box, using a HD version of a YouTube video at full screen, uh, doesn't quite play it, but back in the windowed version, uh, you do get a fairly functional, fluid experience. So back with the Raspberry Pi 2, and the Raspbian operating system. So if we do something um, like fire up a LibreOffice, so the Word version, 
and uh, just uh, see how that opens up, how that functions, how swift, how quickly, um, and obviously it'll look fine. So there we go, that didn't take very long. That is again the very first time that LibreOffice has been fired up on the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system. It's a fresh install and everything types as you would expect it to. There are no delays, there are no problems in using um, Office-like applications on the Raspberry Pi 2 operating system. So we jump back over to the Rose Apple Pi and to buy an 8.1. We'll do the exact same test. We'll fire up LibreOffice. And again, this hasn't been fired up before. So it opens up fairly quickly. Pretty happy with that. And again, very familiar interface. So as you would expect, everything works just seamlessly. It's exactly the experience you would expect from LibreOffice or an Office suite. Uh, no delays, no problems pretty much everything where you expect it to be and it is a quick fluid experience. So there you have it, a quick look around the Rose Apple Pi single board computer and a comparison with the Raspberry Pi or at least an initial comparison. So conclusions, I do find the Rose Apple Pi to be quite a good performer in the desktop arena. It is uh, quicker than the Raspberry Pi but there are a couple of drawbacks as we've pointed out. So if you're looking for something that runs great as a desktop, single board computer, comp compact size and easy to use, Rose Apple Pie is a decent alternative. And it's also fair to point out that the development of the operating systems and the other functionality for the Rose Apple Pie is at its early stages. It does not have the maturity of the Raspberry Pi 2. So things are expected to get a lot better. And I've already seen on the development forums a lot of uh, work being done in 1080p video, uh, different distributions, little bug fixes and so on. So expect some distributions to come out later that have all of the bug fixes already done for you. You can simply flash that SD card, pop it into your Rose Apple Pie and have yourself a nice single board computer. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.